Numbers chapter 20, as we continue to journey uh, with the people of Israel to the promised land through the wilderness. In the first month, the whole Israelite community arrived at the desert of Zin, and they stayed at Kadesh. There Miriam died and was buried. Now, there was no water for the community, and the people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. They quarreled with Moses and said, if only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord. Why did you bring the Lord's community into this wilderness that we and our livestock should die here? Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? It has no corn or figs, grapevines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting and fell face down, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord said to Moses, take the staff and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community, so that they and their livestock can drink. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence, just as he had commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out and the community and their livestock drank. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me enough to honour me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. These were the waters of Meribah, where the Israelites quarrelled with the Lord, and where he was proved holy among them. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom, saying, this is what your brother Israel says. You know about all the hardships that have come on us. Our ancestors went down into Egypt and we lived there many years. The Egyptians ill-treated us and our ancestors. But when we cried out to the Lord, he heard our cry and sent an angel and brought us up out of Egypt. Now we are here at Kadesh, a town on the edge of your territory. Please let us pass through your country. We will not go through any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. We will travel along the king's highway and not turn to the right or to the left until we've passed through your territory. But Edom answered, you may not pass through here. If you try, we will march out and attack you with the sword. The Israelites replied, we will go along the main road, and if we or our livestock drink any of your water, we will pay for it. We only want to pass through on foot, nothing else. Again, they answered, you may not pass through. And Edom came out against them with a large and powerful army. Since Edom refused to let them go through their territory, Israel turned away from them. The whole Israelite community set out from Kadesh and came to Mount Hor. At Mount Hor, near the border of Edom, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Aaron will be gathered to his people. He will not enter the land I give the Israelites, because both of you rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. Call Aaron and his son Eleazar and take them at Mount Hor. Remove Aaron's garments and put them on his son Eleazar, for Aaron will be gathered to his people. He will die there. Moses did as the Lord commanded. They went up Mount Hor in the sight of the whole community. Moses removed Aaron's garments and put them on his son Eleazar, and Aaron died there on top of the mountain. Then Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. And when the whole community learned that Aaron had died, all the Israelites mourned for him 30 days. Okay, three significant uh, incidents in this uh, chapter. Uh, One is to do with some of the personnel who have been key to the story. Um, uh, Miriam uh, dies um, at the beginning and uh, Aaron is to die at the end. And very significantly, as the the high priest, his role passes to his son, Eliezer. Um, So uh, a particular marker of a generation passing away in in this. But but with that, then, um, there is something very significant in the first incident recording in, in, in the chapter, The Water from the Rock. Uh, where the people are yet again complaining about uh, lack of water. And uh, interestingly, this time, they're not talking about going back to Egypt, but um, uh, just that uh, they'd been better off if they died with those who died previously. It may well be that now we're getting to a generation that doesn't remember Egypt uh, so well um, as we travel on in the story. Um, But they're they're saying we've been better off dead with our brothers um, in in the previous incidents than than to live in this situation, in this wilderness. Uh, So they're grumbling again. It's a a thing we've seen right throughout uh, the book. And Moses and Aaron come to the Lord again. Uh, The Lord reveals that they're to speak to a rock and the water will come from it. Um, But poor old Moses has had enough and uh, he's fed up with the people's complaining. And he strikes the rock um, instead of speaking to it. And that water does 
uh, flow from it. Um, uh, his words are quite stark, aren't they? Verse 10, listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then he raised his arm and struck the rock twice and the water comes out. Uh, but then the, the Lord um, speaks to him, rebukes him because you did not trust in me enough to honour me as holy in the sight of the Israelites. You will not bring this uh, community into the land uh, that I command. It's it's a very significant um, judgment on them, isn't it? Um, and um, sorry, get the right verse. And so Aaron, at the end of the chapter, dies um, and passes his uh, robes on to his son, his role on to his son without seeing the promised land. Um, Moses will read in the next few chapters, will see it, but not to enter it uh, because of their failure here. And, and I, I think you'll agree we have a lot of sympathy for Moses and Aaron at this point. Um, they've done so well. They've they've led so faithfully. Well, certainly Moses has. Um, and yet this, this one little um, uh, frustration and uh, he is not able to, to go in. But it reminds us of the, of the standard. The wages of sin is death. He sins here. He doesn't trust the Lord. Um, and uh, um, the, the spiritual picture is we, we cannot enter then. Um, uh, all of us uh, um, are flawed. Uh, all of us fail. Even Moses, none of us deserve to be able to go into the promised land. It's only through uh, trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done on our behalf. Uh, so, of course, Moses will be in glory. He appears on the Mount of Transfiguration uh, to uh, Jesus. But in this picture here, it's a, it's a reminder that salvation is by grace alone, not by merit. None of us deserve to go not even Moses the greatest leader of God's people and um, that's why Jesus is such a con such strong contrast he doesn't fail to trust uh, at any point um the the picture here as well is um this is trust in in Christ uh, 1 Corinthians 10 reminds us that um uh, the people drank the spiritual water from the spiritual rock uh, this is a symbolic moment um, uh, of trust in the rock for water seems a strange thing to do, doesn't it? Um, but actually, it's a picture of, of the spiritual rock that traveled with them, the Lord Jesus, and the water, the Holy Spirit that comes from him. And um, um, it's, a, it's a picture again for us that we need to be trusting in the rock to provide our needs day by day. Uh, and failure to trust um, is, is what excludes uh, from the promised land uh, ultimately um, because of our sin. And so let's, let's press on today, be careful in the grumbling, uh, thinking about trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. The other incident that in quickly in this passage is, is uh, the request to pass through the land of Edom. Um, and Edom, uh, remember this is uh, the descendants of Esau, Jacob's brother, so they are related as a people group. Uh, Edom refused to let them pass through. They're not, uh, they're not wanting to invade, they're, they're not wanting to cause any trouble, they just want to pass through, and yet Edom refuses. Um, and, and this all will escalate over the coming centuries between uh, these two people groups and, and even will be judged for their hostility to God's people uh, but it's a reminder too that we will face hostility today even perhaps from some that we think are closely related to us uh, for the gospel sometimes unreasonably so uh, people will refuse very very natural requests or make life difficult for us um, and we need to recognize that uh, that's part of following the Lord Jesus Christ so let's fix our eyes on the rock let's uh, trust him uh, for the spiritual uh, water that we need today, the spirit to uh, give us life and to help us to walk in his ways. Let's keep trusting, um, even when we feel as though uh, the provisions are lean and life is difficult. Uh, let's go again for fresh from the water, uh, fresh water from the rock. Um, and uh, let's uh, learn the lesson from Moses and Aaron here. Father, we thank you for the promise of the rock who attends us every day. We thank you for our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that the risen Saviour has poured out his spirit upon us, that living water, uh, which now wells up within those who are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, uh, Lord, as we perhaps find at times this life a wilderness and dry and barren spiritually, uh, that we would not be grumblers and complainers, but that we would come back to the rock um, seeking fresh supply uh, for our daily needs. We pray you'd help us to trust in the Lord Jesus through the ups and downs of life in this broken uh, world. Grant us grace, we pray. And as we see Moses fall in what seems such a, a, a small incident compared with his faithfulness over many, many years, Father, we are reminded again of the standards of, of glory, uh, that no sin uh, can uh, be allowed, uh, that uh, the wages of sin is death, um, and it makes us uh, thankful again for the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and um, that uh, he has paid the wages of sin um, and given us the gift of eternal life. 
Father, we pray that you would help us to rejoice in that and help us to rejoice too in the Lord Jesus Christ. As we see Moses, this great leader who falls in a small way, we look at other leaders that we know and love who are flawed and fail. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ who does not fail and is not flawed. We thank you that he is the perfect leader who will bring his people safely home. Thank you that he was able to lay down his life as a sacrifice for us because he was without sin. And we praise you for the Lord Jesus. Amen.